Now we can go to the next topic. We can ask the following question. How we can measure oxygen level? So one way of measuring oxygen level is like using, for example, this PET scan. You remember I showed you the image with uh, or brain image. And uh, the problem is, of course, you can see that oxygen distribution is very inhomogeneous. Like so different, like two different points, like maybe just millimeters apart, you can have like 10 times, 20 times or more difference in how much oxygen we have. Because some tissues we may not require much oxygen, some tissues they can be remotely located from blood vessels, from capillaries, and that means oxygen would take longer time to diffuse there. So depending on many factors, uh, uh, what, what is going to happen that even in the brain oxygen content in homogeneous, the same effect is present in organs as well. If you do like, let's say, if you study heart, kidneys, liver, other organs, muscle tissue, would be a very similar picture. But in addition, there is a effect of auto-regulation, as we call it in physiology. That means depending on uh, needs of the body, like if we digest food, sleep, and do some other activities, the body actually is able to uh, redirect blood to certain organs which require more energy physical exercise the same, uh, in order to do this work more efficiently. It's called after regulation. It can change blood flow, oxygen supply several times a day, two, three times or more because of after regulation. And that makes it even harder to find oxygen level in the body because it's distribution so inhomogeneous. But uh, at the same time, uh, fortunately, one doctor, a Soviet doctor, Buteika, who was a leading Soviet physiologist for uh, spaceship research in 1960s, he was hired to do this this job, uh, he done a lot of testing measuring oxygen in the body tissues and measuring breathing uh, in people. And he came up with a very simple test actually, how anybody can do measurements of oxygen, uh, basically like within one minute or less, would be for average time. What is required for this uh, test is the following. So if you want to measure oxygen level, I call it a breath holding time or body oxygen test. There are name breath holding time, body oxygen test. And this test is, is done in the following way. You need to rest, sit and rest for about five minutes, maybe more, so if you feel like your body calms down, maybe you need some exercise and kind of get your normal state at rest. And then what you do next uh, while sitting, you monitor your breath. So what happens during uh, when you sit and breathe, of course you inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And what is required, here I'm going to show you this image. Uh, after your usual exhalation, when you have outhale, during this test, we pin the nose. So you exhale, ordinary exhale, pin the nose. And uh, I'm going to count one, two, three, so to do the counting, so that to find out how much is your breath holding time. But there are two requirements for this test. One requirement is we do exhale first, so your ordinary, usual exhalation that you have right now. And the next requirement would be that we do this test only until the first stress or discomfort. We do not do it like as long as possible. Right? The, the, the time would be like maybe twice longer, sometimes more than that. We want to find stress-free time when we are totally easy. So when you get first stress or discomfort, you need to release your nose. And uh, when you release your nose, what is going to happen, as it is shown on this image, which you can see, that uh, your breathing pattern after the test is going to be the same as before the test. So the way you breathe now should be the same when you finish the test. Understand yeah, how it works? I did this test with thousands of people, literally with many thousands of people, and the most common mistake that people make is following. Uh, we ex usually exhale, yeah, exhale is important, again, I exhale, we hold the breath, but then we are not sure when to stop, and maybe we can do a little bit more, we try to like, get a better result, better number, maybe two, three, five seconds, but the further we push, the more stress we experience, you know, like a stronger, stronger air hunger. And then, of course, later, we gasp for air. You can see, you can hear, we are like taking deeper, deeper breath, maybe twice deeper breath. We notice themselves that your breathing pattern is disturbed, and this is a sign that you, you don't do the test right. So usually I know that for a person, if he or she repeats this test uh, two, three times, maybe four times, we know where to stop. And for vast majority of people, this test, like, we can find exactly what is the number. And we are going to discuss what is this number, how it changes, how we can change it, and, like, sleep, diet, exercise, how, 
how we influence the briefing of this number, and how this number reflects the briefing as well. So this second image, uh, which I show here now, showing the second situation with incorrect test. So we have correct test at the top and incorrect test at the bottom. And this incorrect test, again, is manifested in holding breath too long and then taking deeper breath so that your breath pattern for next one, two, three breaths is going to be disturbed if you take more air. 